Hi guys and welcome back to another video and we're going to be looking at some more exam questions, some MFTS exam questions in this video, a few different topics and talking about things that can regularly come up on the exam as well. So let's jump in and have a look at our first question. So question one, what is the greatest disadvantage of using amalgam in posterior teeth? Is it A, mercury toxicity, B, per aesthetics, C, sound tooth requires removal for retention, D, increase in incidence of cusp fracture, or E, per lifespan of restoration. Okay, so mercury toxicity, we know that's not really an issue if the amalgam is placed correctly and under the right conditions. Per aesthetics, yeah, it has a disadvantage, but it's not the greatest disadvantage. Sound tooth requires removal for retention. This is definitely looking good. Increase incidence of cusp fracture. Yeah, there can be, particularly with, with large amalgams, but again, if the cavity is designed correctly, we can minimize those. And per lifespan of retention, of, uh, of restoration, not so much. Uh, the correct answer here is C. An amalgam and kind of dental materials, this is a common topic that can come up a lot in these exams. Um, particularly for amalgam, you should look at things like the, the actual reaction, the chemical reaction that, that goes on whenever amalgam is setting, the different phases, the different uh, stages of it, um, the different components in the amalgam, silver, tin, and all those things, um, the different concentrations and, and how change the amount of copper in there can change the properties of the amalgam and how all those things affect amalgam and it, its characteristics and properties. Those are all very common things to be asked in, the, in this exam as well. Question two, a 15 year old patient attends for orthodontic assessment. They are a thumb sucker. What malocclusion are you likely to see? A, a posterior open bite, B, an anterior open bite, C, increased overbite, D, a median diastema, and E, a class three skeletal relationship. Um, well, I, I, this takes a little bit of thinking here, but obviously if the thumb is gonna be in the front of the mouth, it's, it's gonna prevent the the front teeth from from coming together correctly and if it's in there and they're still 15 years old and they're still some sucking their thumb then definitely there's going to be an anterior open bite here um there there might be some of these other um features as well um they could have a class 3 skeletal relationship or they, you know they could have a median diastem as well but you know that that's likely just there um not as a result of the of, of the of the habit or the thumb sucking um, but b would be the correct answer here in terms of ortho as a topic overall for the mfds exam um one of the the topics that comes up most commonly would be the cephalometric values and knowing them and how they affect your orthodontic assessment or your diagnosis is important as well and that would be good to know those numbers pretty much off the top of your head um, for the for the ortho sections and our next question question three where are you most likely to find a radicular cyst um, is it the maxillary central incisor region the mandibular central incisor region the mandibular premolar region maxillary premolar region or the mandibular third molar region. This this is one of these questions, and you you know you either know it or you don't. But the correct answer here is the maxillary central incisor region. Um, it's it's really really good to know the different types of cysts, where they are, where they're most commonly at. Um, you know, what cysts are associated with what type of teeth, like a. A dentigerous cyst is associated with an unerupted tooth. Uh, a radicular cyst would be a non-vital tooth. Things, things like that. Those are very, very common questions that also come up on the MFDS exam. Question four: Which one of the following is not a cause of tooth surface loss on the palatal surface of the maxillary central incisors? Is it A. Chemotherapy, B. Esophageal reflux, C. Anorexia? D bulimia or E pregnancy so this one takes a little bit of thinking so we're looking at tooth surface lost on the palatal surface of the maxillary central incisors so because it's on the palatal surface that would have to be an acid source coming from within so likely vomiting or some kind of acid 
uh, attacking the back of the of the or the palatal surface of the teeth. So we kind of go through these and we think chemotherapy, yeah, you know that can make us feel sick. Esophageal reflux, obviously bringing up acid as well. Bulimia, again associated with acid from the stomach. And pregnancy as well, we can have morning sickness associated with that, and that also will produce acid into the oral cavity, attacking the palatal surfaces, the maxillary central incisors. Um, so the the only answer here that, that doesn't really fit in with that uh, logic would be anorexia, because that's uh, a deficiency in caloric intake. So the correct answer here would be C, anorexia. Question five, our final question for this video is which one of the following teeth is most commonly congenitally absent except for wisdom teeth? Is it the maxillary central incisor, the maxillary lateral incisor, the maxillary first premolar, the maxillary second premolar, or the mandibular second premolar? And this, uh, like like the ortho question before, it's, it's one of those things that you either know or you don't. Um, but the answer here would be the, ma the mandibular second premolar, the lower fives, would be the, the next most commonly congenitally missing teeth. Um, and that, again, you know, is a, is a good one to know. And how the, the maxillary lateral incisors, that's kind of the, the red flag there. And I'd say a few people probably would, would go for that answer as well. Um, but this, I think, kind of ties in with um, knowing those, a, few, a few facts and figures that you just have to kind of rote learn and, and learn off by heart. Um, it's you know with the with the cephalometrics or eruption dates of teeth then as well those are all very common things that, that come up uh, and are very easy points to gain as well on the on the exam well that's all for this video thanks very much for watching if you enjoy these videos or if you find them useful please do like the video subscribe to the channel and I can make more of them uh, thanks for watching <laughs>